everyone happy scrubbing i am really excited to be here today to share with you a layout for the pink fresh studio design team using one of the gorgeous new collections that they have called noteworthy now this layout is a mixed media layout and as you can see i'm gessoing everything at the moment and it is in a 9 by 12 inch format and that is my Project Life 2020 album size. So you're going to be seeing a few layouts from me in that size. And and yeah, so I've just used my brayer and I've got some Liquitex white gesso there on that beautiful light blue patterned paper. And I just use my brayer just to roughly roll out some gesso on there. Now, the reason why I wasn't too finicky about it is because I really wanted that gesso to do two things. Act as a gesso, which is sort of like a, a barrier between th from your paper uh, and your product. So your product sits on top and also to sort of help transition out and blend out some of that pattern paper that you see there that. That gorgeous little light blue and white check. I've also grabbing my Pink Fresh Studio watercolors and I've done a swatch there so I tested the colors that I wanted. Now this photo is of me and my children on Mother's Day and there was a few of us wearing blue so I knew that I was going to go with a blue theme and tie some other colors in as I went along. I've grabbed one of the new free uh, Pink Fresh Studio free printables like cut files there and which I thought was perfect for this and the title being lovely and I've just cut off that little floral component and I'll tie it in a little bit later when I've done my mixed media work using some of the gorgeous little uh, envelope pockets that came in a kit and some of the blue embellishments I, I pulled out all the blues with, that have a little bit of purple and a little bit of yellow in them and that's the main theme that I'm going to try and work with so I'm just layering them up behind my photo and sort of building building a bit of a cluster and that's I'm just setting out here because I'm thinking about my mixed media where I'm going to want it to go and how am I sort of going to want it to sit to tie in that little I had that little bit of a floral off my cut file there and to tie that in I thought I needed another floral so I'm just fussy cutting this one out of the cut apart noteworthy cut apart sheet and I'm just going to tuck that into the top corner there and you'll see that cut file that excess cut file floral there will form part down the bottom so you'll kind of see that I've made it a bit of a diagonal uh, waterfall kind of going trickling down the page and just to sort of balance that up I've put my lovely at that that angle that sort of carries up on that envelope there so here I am I've just taken a quick snap of it on my photo so I don't forget where everything goes I don't know about you with this COVID thing I'm feeling a bit like I'm, I'm losing my mind at times and a bit forgetful uh, and I, so I thought I'll just snap a photo there because I knew that's how I wanted everything to go and then if when I'm putting it all back together if I needed to use it as a reference I could so here I am I'm just beginning to layer up some of the colors the the um, sorry the watercolor colors from pink fresh studio now the two colors that I'm using are sky and give me a second sky and sapphire now as you saw the sapphire is really quite dark and that sky is almost an aqua but as you can see when i blend it together and sort of swatch it all off i'm creating creating it's kind of an its own color and i also know that when you're working with these watercolors you you've got a gradient of color if you apply it thick it's very dark but then if you add water it really blends out and becomes that softer color that's the beautiful thing about these watercolors you'll also notice there's some parts where i'm getting sort of that rough texture um, like down there where I'm working now you can kind of see it and then up in the on the, op, like the diagonal opposite you can see it a little bit there and that's where the gesso hasn't hasn't been has I haven't applied gesso in those spots so it creates a bit of a textured looking 
in your mixed media, if that makes sense. I wouldn't apply too much more then, otherwise you'll start to see it sort of break down the paper. And if I worked it too hard, it would start, the paper would start to fluff up and I would, it would sort of soak through. But if you're just doing a quick wash and, and you manage to maybe dab off some of that excess water, you get this really beautiful kind of textured look, which I think when we're doing mixed media backgrounds is really what we're trying to create is, um, an interest in our in when using mixed media it's creating depth it's creating dimension it's creating layers and as you can see that's really come together like when I had two really strong distinctive colors and look what look at the look at the color that I've been at different you know the spectrum of color that I've been able to create just by using some of those really basic techniques um, there and also at the white as you can see it, when I'm just adding watered down acrylic paint there and I'm just splattering it on but it really sort of brings brings that white to life and adds that little bit of extra so you can see those spots on the back I'm just drying those off and that's where you can see the gesso wasn't and where it's now starting to soak through the page but that's nothing a heat can can't fix when you do it quickly look how that cut file now jumps off that background you can re it really pops and it makes that white really stand out and that's what I was sort of after I was after getting things to really jump off and also I just wanted to make that that transition from my photo cluster to my background a little bit more seamless and that's what I find mixed media creating mixed media backgrounds really does for me I'm just roughing up the edges now because when with these beautiful um, pink fresh studio papers when you rough up the edges you get that beautiful little bit of a white coming on now that doesn't happen with all paper collections it, it stands testament to the quality of paper that pink fresh studio use it's thick and beautiful and you get when you scruff it up like that with just a an edge distressor or that tools like an old one from prima marketing or a little bit of um, sandpaper if you rough it up all of a sudden you're getting a bit more of an aged worn look and you can really create a bit another way of creating a little bit more texture in in your scrapbooking page there i just love how this layout's coming together and you know i need to love this one because it's a mother's day layout <laughs> look at my beautiful babies growing up i just i just adore them as i'm sure you all adore your children pets extended family we're just so I feel so blessed to have such a um, such a big family and one a family that's close and you know we all care about each other so I'm just trying to now recreate my little waterfall moment <laughs> that I had going on before but I'm also mindful now that my mixed media I don't want to cover it all up so I have to try to change it up a little bit but still get the general gist of the idea one, another thing that I want to do is I didn't want to sort of stick everything down flat and sort of all blend into that background. So just using a little bit of foam tape there and that foam tape I've got, I just picked up at my local um, hardware store and it, on, on a bulk roll. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's quite thin, that, that it's designed to... Um, put on the back of picture frames and stick it on your wall. So they, obviously you don't want too much bulk when you're doing that. So it's nice and thin but it really just gives that little bit of dimension and helps that photo cluster kind of jump off now we're up to the fun part aren't we this is where we get to put on all these sweet little embellishments and the noteworthy collection is full of it it's got um enamel dots epoxy um epoxy stickers it's got foam stickers it's got dimensional stickers it's got ephemera it's got cardstock stickers even those little wood veneer ones you can see up in the corner this collection is jam-packed full of embellishments and you just it's it's really great because you can be really picky about what you want now what I was seeing here is I've got so much blue I've got those little tiny bits of purple and green but I just want to add another color in and what color the color that I always think of when I think of blues is a pop of yellow and I knew that this uh, ephemera packs and the sticker packs had these yellow elements in there and that I knew I could just tie just to bring that extra little color in I knew I could tie that tie that in and bring it all bring it it'll just give that little bit of a 
a pop there. So it's time to adhere my cut file down. I'm a little bit luxurious when I cut my cut files. I use the Basil Marsh Mellow White Card Stock, which is really, really thick. It would be, I would think, at least 350 GSM. So it's super chunky. I always have to have my um, Silhouette Chemi O. It always has to do a double cut and it's always on like the ultra thick card stock setting and it takes forever to cut a full 12 by 12 piece but I have to say the cut files feel really solid and chunky so I lo always love to do that um yeah and I'm just adding here having fun mix mucking around with lots of embellishments and turning this layout into something a little bit a bit of a treat um a little bit oh, adding those little little detail bits just turn uh, other other I don't know what I'm saying when I'm adding those tiny little features they're the parts that I fall in love with on a layout and it's almost the fun part it's the artistic part for me where I get to just place little bits and bobs here and there and do you know what this collection is so jam-packed full you got I kind of got to be a little bit reckless and just go oh yeah I'm gonna put that one there and oh yeah I'm gonna stick another one there and oh what the hell I'm gonna stick another one over there <laughs> so I don't so I got to be a little bit luxurious and have a bit of a play around there and the other thing that I'm thinking of also is that the page that goes opposite this is a project life page it's a pocket style page and it holds nine three by four inch portrait size photos and I was also thinking that I really because they're sitting side by side and they're all taken on Mother's Day as well um, they're sitting side by side I wanted to make sure some of those embellishments I was saving for the opposite page now that video is coming up tomorrow on my channel so if you're interested in project life and you do a little bit of pocket style scratch booking I encourage you to head back on over tomorrow and see um, see that layout and see how I put that one together and then you'll be able to see side by side um, I took a photo of them together and at the end of that video I you, you will see that photo of how they look together and it's almost like I'm scrapbooking a double page spread it's like I'm wanting to make that side tie into my lay this side layout um, as well so when you're looking at it like when you're flicking through your album it looks like they were meant to be together and that they use the same colors a few of the same techniques a few of those same elements and then it sort of all all comes together and looks like a beautiful double page spread even though one's pocket style and one is a traditional layout so yeah so if you like this you want to see a little bit more of this come back tomorrow and you'll see it on my channel and there you go there's my mixed media layout for the pink fresh studio design team i hope you like it i hope it's inspired you to be creative with mixed media and use lots of yummy embellishments on your pages all right guys take care happy scrapping bye